are still pretty big, especially in some of these new players like X Pong and Lee Auto. Now we know that these names really had a pretty solid May, and I say that very hesitantly because I'd say I'm basing that off of the fact that they've had facing different shortages, whether it's labor or just parts. So there was still a very honest theme, but I, hey, I have to say that Lee Auto deliveries from during from April to May now, Alex, so month over month, they surged 175 percent. That just seems ridiculous to me. But I guess also comparatively, April was when the country was still predominantly locked down. Yeah, interesting too is while Neo is maybe seen as more established, it's actually delivering less. that Neo is uh, a little bit more premium than maybe those players are. Uh, and 5,000 of uh, their Neo deliveries were the premium smart electric SUVs. But uh, I look at this and, uh, you know, while those growth rates are, you know, seemingly astronomical, they've passed over Neo now in terms of the actual raw number of vehicles delivered. I think I base them being more established based on the fact that I think Neo has been publicly traded longer. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I mean, absolutely. Lee Auto is now actually a pretty big player. I guess my question is always, how do these three names compete with Tesla? Because I think that's everyone's question. Tesla is such a huge company. It's been so successful in the way that it's completely surpassed M and Ford in terms of its market cap. So I just have to wonder, you know, how do these three companies collectively compete with the interest that is the average Tesla consumer? Because those Tesla consumers and those Tesla bulls, Alex, they are fierce. <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, what I would say is the population of China right now is 1.4 billion, or at least that was the last census, where the U.S. is, what, a fraction of that, 20% of that maybe or so. So you start thinking Tesla's dominance is primarily here in the U.S. It's not necessarily in that Chinese marketplace, but even if it was, there's a lot of cars to be sold uh, in China, and that's where uh, the Neos, the Liatos, the Xpangs are, are really focused, and there's a ton of consumers there. There are. I guess the other concern when looking at these names outside of the fact that obviously their deliveries were strong. We saw some of these name, names post triple digit percentage growth month over month, which mm -hmm. is ridiculous. The other concern, of course, is the Chinese regulations, the Chinese handling of the way the COVID surging cases has gone, because there is, of course, yesterday we got news that we're, we're going to see some resumption of normalcy. But I think the question is, when you're looking at trading these names, how long does it take to get there? Yeah, that's the question, Jenny. Uh, we'll have to keep our eyes on these ones and, and watch them as they go. But they've certainly uh, started to show some nice numbers. There's still a lot of concerns in terms of uh, the Chinese names here in the U.S., just from a geopolitical basis as well. Obviously, growth names have fallen out of favor to some extent as well. So uh, we'll see uh, which one of these forces that weighs on these stock prices in the end uh, is the winner. Uh, obviously, all the Chinese names under tremendous pressure to start 2022. But uh, we'll see if this can be a turning point. Uh, we'll take a short break and a nice pop. And I think the question before the open today was going to be, are some of these macro, you know, overshadowing concerns that have just been lingering throughout 2022, were they going to, you know, come back uh, to roost a little bit in this market that's been, uh, you know, moving higher? Or was Salesforce going to provide that shot of optimism that this market needed? And mm -hmm. I think we've gotten our answer so far, and that Salesforce hasn't been enough, but it's certainly been enough for itself. Stock having a nice uh, day here today. Even though it is off its highs, it's still up a nice $15 to 175 and some change, but notably not far off its intraday lows. So here's the thing about Salesforce's earnings, is I think there's a lot of expectations. Here on Investing, I'm Alex Coffey alongside Jenny Horn. It's time for under 30. Jenny, we're talking some Affirm. Uh, this is a concept that was really just repackaging of an old concept, yet the market was like, this is the greatest thing we've ever heard of. Yes, and I was initially, I feel like one of the first people being like, buy, na buy now, pay later has existed forever. I mean, at least as long as I can remember because so many different companies offer their own service. PayPal offers their own. We know Square bought Afterpay. I'm very well versed in this space that is like, spend as much money as you can for a, as little money up for today. Coming up next, we have the watch list with Nicole Petalides. <laughs> 